medium sand, medium neutral, medium tan honey, tan honey, deep honey, rich sand, mahogany. Moments in the beauty space go viral for different reasons, but one thing that they all have in common is that they evoke emotions. And in my 11 years on this platform, in this space, uh, I've noticed that the vast majority of them evoke negative emotions. Maybe all of them. I don't know. Possibly all of them, if we're going to be honest. What magnifies those moments is when people band together to say, yeah, this is not right. This is not okay. And that's what happened back in 2018 with the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation launch. Huge YouTuber Jackie Aina invited her friend and also huge YouTuber Alyssa Ashley over to her house for the first time to react to the foundation launch that everyone was so excited about. And what ensued was essentially a virtual whooping of Tarte and, you know, brands really started looking at complexion products and shade ranges in a different way because in short, no one wanted to be Tarte. Today we are talking about the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation launch from 2018 and how it changed our beauty space forever. This is Behind the Controversy and we're starting right now. when we step back as beauty consumers, people that have been in the beauty space for a long time, if we really step back, I personally feel like the height of the beauty space when it came to reviews of cosmetic products was 2016 to 2018. What made that the height for me is that those kinds of videos, review videos, were the ones that were getting millions and millions of views because people were curious about the latest makeup products coming out. If you know Notice now those videos just across the board don't get as many views as they used to. There are a lot of reasons why I think that makeup reviews don't get as many views as they used to, but that is a whole nother video in its entirety. What I need you to know about the situation if you were not there is that beauty reviews, makeup reviews specifically were the thing. They were the thing that everybody was paying attention to. The Tarte Shape Tape Concealer launched in 2016. It was a different approach to concealer. It was marketed as something that was more of a contour product, something that could brighten the under eye. And if you bought a second shade, you could also contour with it. Hey guys, it's Lee from Tarte Cosmetics and I could not be more excited to tell you guys about our brand new Shape Tape Contouring Concealer. And the thing that I love so much about this concealer, and I know that you will too, is that it's a full coverage contouring concealer. So it literally does everything that you want. It's gonna cover, brighten, shape, and perfect and my favorite thing is you don't even need to set this with powder if you don't want to it does come in six shades so there's a shade for almost every skin tone and i know that you're going to love the results as much as i do so i'm just going to go ahead and add three drops right under my eye just like that and then i'm going to use this amazing new blending sponge to blend it in so i've wet this you guys and got it really wet wrung out any excess moisture and now you'll notice I'm just dabbing this in really light motions into my skin. So now that's not all it does. You can actually contour with this because it's so creamy, so matte, and it's just got an amazing texture. So I'm gonna use the tan shade and I'm just gonna add a little bit of contour to my face with this. So I'm gonna start at the top of my ear, right down to where my eye actually starts, and then just add a little bit right up here on my hairline. You may be noticing the same thing that I'm noticing right now in that Lee is, uh, seems to be, we'll say seems to be, applying a contour over top of an already existing contour, which may be some kind of technique that you may see at some point. But remember, Lee is demonstrating a contour product and then not mentioning that she already has a contour product on. The other thing that I find strange is that the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer that she chose to use for the contour is lighter than the, what I'm assuming is a powder contour that she already has on, which makes absolutely no sense to me if the purpose is to show how she's adding shadow to the face. But what I'm thinking may have happened in the middle of this photo shoot is that they realized that their shade range did not go deep enough to contour even Lee's face. <laughs> that is assuming that the tan shade she's using was the deepest shade. 
And again, just gonna go to work, blending this in. It's all about the blending. I think you guys are gonna absolutely love this concealer. Keep us posted, of course, on social, reach out and let us know what you think. And that's it, bye-bye. And when I tell you that this freaking concealer was everywhere over the next couple of years, it was everywhere. So if you guys watch beauty videos, if you guys follow any beauty people on YouTube or whatnot, you guys will know that the Tarte Shape Tape has been like literally slaying the scene for concealers. Everyone's obsessed with it and it's for good reason. It's literally the most intense, full coverage, very easily to blend freaking concealer of all time. I absolutely love it. This is like my number one favorite for the whole entire year. I'm gonna grab the Tarte Shape Tape in the shade medium because I do have a spray tan right now. My friend Jackie sprayed me the other night. Gosh, I absolutely love having a, a friend who knows how to spray tan and she just comes over like she'll just text me and be like, hey girl, I'm a mile away from your house. Wanna tan? I'm like, yes, please. Okay, honestly, like I'm shocked right now. My skin looks like a baby's like it looks like it did when I was born for concealer I'm going to be using the shape tape in the color medium this is one of my favorite concealers I really like it um, because it's like a creamy consistency it's not too drying so normally if I'm doing my makeup off camera I'll probably just blend the contour in and then go in with the concealer but since I'm trying to show you guys how I like to place everything I'm gonna just do it all and show you so I like to apply that under my eye in like a downwards triangle. On my smile lines, my chin, and then in between my brows. My favorite is Tarte Shape Tape. I apply concealer to kind of highlight the face and bring life to it. And in researching this video, one thing that I found really fascinating is that the original video where Tarte marketed this product, she specifically put little dots of concealer, but that is not the way that people were using it on YouTube. Everybody was doing the triangle thing where you just covered your whole under eye with the concealer. Sometimes you just painted it up here. You could paint it other places. It was not a subtle use of this product. And I think that that use, that triangle concealer kind of look, look ended up not working out so well for a lot of people, especially people like me that have fine lines under my eyes. It seeped into my fine lines so bad because I wasn't using it the way that Tarte marketed it. I was using it the way the beauty gurus used it. But regardless of all of that, I think that at the time, and you can correct me if you had a different experience, I feel like the beauty gurus led us to believe that this was the best concealer that had ever existed. And if I found any problem with the way that it was working on me, I felt like it was my fault. <laughs> I genuinely did because it was everywhere. And if you tried to get this concealer, typically it was sold out and then they would have a restock and then you could purchase it and then it would promptly sell out again and yada, 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 on and on and on and on. My point is, is it was very, very popular. So in January, 2017, when Kathleen Lights tweeted at Tarte, what did she say? She said, at Tarte Cosmetics, can we get a shape tape foundation, LOL? To which they responded, we were thinking the same thing. People lost their minds. They were like, oh my gosh, there's gonna be a Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. Like, I can't even imagine this happening in 2023. Like the amount of passion people had for launches back then was very different than the amount of passion that I see across the internet today. It's very rare that people lose their minds over a potential foundation in this day and age. Wait, you know what? I just said it was 2023. It is 2024. We changed over. It is January. Scratch all the previous 2023s. I'm, I'm in 2024 now. But anyway, let's rewind back to 2017. So after Kathleen tweeted and they tweeted back and everyone started losing their minds, people went over to the Tarte website and they noticed that there was a little, you know, like the little tabs at the top of the page that are like help you navigate the page. There was one that said Shape Tape Family and people were like, oh my gosh. And they continued to lose their minds, waiting and excited there were gonna be more Shape Tape products. And of course, this was a very smart business move for Tarte because they had created a hero product and Tarte knew 
that the shape tape name was going to be a line it was going to continue on and you do see that on their website today they do use shape tape for quite a few things that are not concealer related because when people see shape tape they think oh you know whatever product that i have now that shape tape this is going to be a similar thing and i'm going to really like it and then they purchase it that's the whole point of a hero product so back in 2017 tart really wanted to cultivate this but what they did not know is that yes the shape tape foundation was going to go viral and everybody was going to be talking about it but it was not the reason that they had hoped on new year's day of 2018 almost exactly a year since their tweet to kathleen lights tart officially announced that shape tape foundation was coming they put up this little clip video of these large caps that looked like shape tape concealer but they weren't shape tape concealer they had the same little dippy wand the doe foot wand but the caps were large showing that it was going to look exactly like the shape tape concealer but just in a larger bottle 10 days later sophie from trend mood did the thing that sophie does best which is share information probably before the brand really wanted her to but it was public information that i don't know how she found whether she found it herself or someone sent it to her i do not know but there was a landing page on ulta's website for the tarte shape tape foundation and sophie got screenshots it showed the description of the product it showed the launch date of january 21st online february 1st in stores and it also showed the shade range which is how all of this got started tart was releasing two different formulas of their shape tape foundation a hydrating one and a matte one there were 15 shades in each formula but the shade reins were noticeably strange i'm going to put them on the screen for you so you can see them and what may stand out to you and what stood out to people at the time was that there were many many fair to light shades fair to light not light medium but fair to light shades that looked near identical and then just a few deep shades at the bottom like one medium shade two deep shades just a huge huge jump and remember this was in the context of everybody losing their mind over the shape tape concealer people being really excited about makeup launches in general everybody wanting to try things uh, there was a collecting mentality that I don't feel like is quite as strong today as it was back then when I say everybody of course I don't mean everybody but hyperbolically everybody wanted to try this foundation and when and they looked at the shade range a lot of people noticed that there was no way they were going to get to try this foundation and there was a lot of disappointment there the comment section under trend moods post lit up with people both excited if they did see their shade and disappointed if they didn't there were also articles that were starting to be written about the shade range of the new foundation including one from bustle i have a ton of articles down in the description box for you if you want to read all of the articles that i read in preparation for this video but this bustle quote that they wrote in the article i thought really resonated with what was happening at the time they said those who were excited about the launch now have to deal with the fact that the brand didn't craft a color to fit them after trend moods post came out tart did make sort of a statement they were interviewed by pop sugar about the shade range and i will put the full statement on the screen right now if you go to that pop sugar article now this has been clipped out of it but the internet is forever essentially what they said was that yeah they've got 10 more shades coming but because it's winter time you know we want to release the darker shades in the summer because people tan in the summer and you know we're going to need darker shades in the summer because of that we'll talk more about that in just a little bit and now on the screen i will show you just a small selection of the comments under sophie's post of people just very disappointed that they weren't going to be able to try this highly anticipated foundation and to add insult to injury the launch date for this foundation was january 15th martin luther king jr day influencers on twitter started weighing in their thoughts people like james charles and laura lee put out their opinions on twitter james is still available laura's is no longer james says this is disappointing reportedly laura's had said but the shade range come on tart 
this is sad, but I think more important than those opinions, people really wanted to hear the opinions of people who were actually affected by the lack of shade range. On January 17th, two days after the foundation launched at Tarte's website, but before it launched at Ulta, I don't believe it was ever available at Sephora, but before it launched at Ulta, Jackie released this video. It is called Black Girls React to Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. Jackie, Alyssa, Nima Tang, Makeup Shayla, they were at the top of the game for black beauty influencers. Their videos always got hundreds of thousands of views, if not millions of views every time they uploaded. What was interesting about this specifically was that Tarte had sent all of them PR boxes with the shades that they thought would match well for them. It wasn't the full line. It was just three bottles of each formula. So Alyssa brings her box of PR over to Jackie's house. Jackie has her box and they start swatching. And needless to say, the shades were not working well. In the screenshot, Jackie is swatching the three deepest shades of the hydrating formula. This is tan sand, deep honey, and mahogany. The three shades of the matte formula were not much better. Those were called deep honey, rich sand, and mahogany. Jackie called the matte shades orange with a brown undertone. But I think what was really important about this video is it wasn't people who found their shades speaking up for people that couldn't find their shades. It was people who couldn't find their shades really talking about how they felt about it. And believe it or not, it is not a just straight up trashing video. You can tell Alyssa and Jackie are both trying to find anything positive they can possibly say to balance how upset and disappointed they were. And I would dare to say that even Jackie and Alyssa didn't know how big this was going to get. Later that night, after Jackie posted her video, Tarte put up an Instagram story. You know, one of the ones that disappears. They put one of those up on their Instagram, and this is what it said. It may be a little too late, but we can assure you that this was not meant in any kind of malicious way. We all just got caught up in hashtag shape tape nation and seeing your tweets asking for it. We wanted to get the product out as fast as possible, and we made the decision to move forward before all the shades were ready to go. We know there is no excuse, and we take full responsibility for launching this way. We lost sight of what's really important in the industry, and for those who feel alienated in our community, we want to personally apologize. We're doing everything in our power to bring those unfinished shades to market as fast as we can at any cost. We can and will do better. They did not have that statement posted to Twitter. What they did have was a redirect. It said, we want to let you know that we hear you. We're reading all of your tweets and comments and have addressed them on our IG stories. Also later that day, Makeup Shayla posted her thoughts on the Shape Tape Foundation. And one thing that was different about Shayla's video is that she made it a point to share that she really likes Tarte and that she has gone on many trips with them. They've always been kind to her, that everybody that she's ever met that works for the brand is really nice. And she said that she felt like that was even more reason why she felt like she needed to make this video. One of the first visuals I saw for the foundation, uh, I believe was on Pop Sugar. You can kind of see it, right? Chaw. I have like all my notes on my little iPad here. This is actually an iPad that Tarte gave me on a trip in with Tarte. But you can see like the first nine shades, they all kind of look very similar. It's interesting that there's so many different shades for lighter skin tones and then when you get to the deeper skin tones, there's really only like three. That was like the first thing that kind of caught my eye and we'll, we'll kind of go into that deeper, deeper, no pun intended. We'll go into that a little bit later. Before we swatch the colors, I do want to say that you know, I have a great relationship with Tarte. I have been invited to a lot of the Trippin' with Tarte um, trips all over the world. I've had nothing really but good things to say about the people that work for Tarte. I think that made it even more important for me to make this video and I'm not holding anything back. Shayla was able to find her shade in the matte formula, but she was very clear in her disappointment at the jump between shades and that she could not find her shade in the hydrating formula. I'm just gonna swatch light to dark. This is tan sand. Do one big swatch. This is deep honey. And this is mahogany. All right, let's start with tan honey. This actually looks a little bit pinker than this one. This is deep honey. This is rich sand. I feel like I would be like here, you know? 
Like, I feel like... I mean, I don't feel like it. They're missing so many shades. It's just crazy. It's it's like it blows my mind that these are the three darkest shades. Um, okay, let's just try and figure out which one. There's really only one option here. I'm just going to blend this and try and figure out which one is going to look the best because at this point I just want to try on one of the foundations that's closest to my skin tone. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTubers do half and half. Um, I don't think I really have that option because I really don't have my shade. So maybe the hydrating is going to be the closest. Oh no, this looks darker on camera. Whoa. All right, let's do... We're gonna go with the mattifying, which is Deep Honey. So this foundation actually looks like it's matching the Deep Honey. If you're my shade exactly, you'll probably find a color. If you're five shades lighter, you may also find a color. And then five shades darker, just saying. This actually looks pretty good. I know, you guys are probably like, what? Don't say anything nice about it, but I mean, this is a review. I'm reviewing the product. And as far as the consistency, this looks really good, which is kind of a shame, you know, because they really didn't come out with a lot of shades. Shayla went even as far as to say that the launch made her just not even want to use Tarte products anymore. All right, I'm going to conceal under my eyes with tan sand, and I'm actually going to contour with, which color is this? Rich sand. I was a big fan of the Shape Tape concealer. It's definitely one of my favorites. Not sure I'm going to continue to use it. I probably won't. The launch of this uh, foundation just kind of makes me not want to use Tarte, to be honest with you. On Ulta's launch day, Nima Tang also uploaded a video about the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. And I feel like Nima was actually the most harsh toward Tarte about this. And I think it's because, and she kind of alluded to this in her video, that she made it a point to have a major part of her channel be about uh, just teaching people and showing people how important it is to have a diverse shade range. She had the series on her channel called The Dark darkest shade where she physically showed whether she could get a shade in a foundation range. And the fact that Tarte was aware of her series, aware of her, sent her foundation and none of them matched her, that was a huge deal. Nima even went as far as to accuse Tarte of releasing the abysmal shade range in order to get attention toward the product. After seeing everything play out and after seeing the responses, the statements, everything like that, I genuinely believe that Tarte coming out with the Shape Tape Foundation with the shade range that it has was done purposefully, in my opinion. Um, it was something that I felt like they used, they did to garner more attention to the launch of this foundation. Um, basically get more publicity get more exposure and that is like the one thing that aggravates me the most they put out that apology saying like we definitely should have done better we um shape tape nation got the best of us or whatever i'm literally prayer paraphrasing it at this time because i can't be bothered to go and look it up because it's complete trash to me um i don't care what the apology was i genuinely believe that this was to create more attention, to create more exposure for the launch of this foundation, which was absolutely not even needed. Uh, Shape Tape was like, I think I heard it's the number one selling concealer in the world. Like you absolutely did not need to go down this path and this route. We have worked so hard to get to this point. That was my main focus in 2017, was my Darkest Shade series, to get this message out there and we're getting somewhere, we're making noise, we're making progress. It's so crazy to see everyone actually banding together and talking about this and put holding Tarte accountable for what they did. Tarte knows exactly what's going on, what the what's gonna get people riled up. It's complexion issues right now. We're trying to push this forward and make a change, a positive change in the beauty community. So when companies drop foundation ranges that are trash, with no effort at all. It's talked about. We actually discuss it and we talk about it. For me, I see what the intention was and that angers me even more because that's a setback. Also, one of the reasons why I feel like this was an intentional thing is the statement that was given, the first initial statement that was given to Pop Sugar as to why the foundations weren't complete. Um, 
I think the statement was something along the lines of, oh yeah, we're definitely extending more shades in the spring and summer months because we tan and get darker in the summertime. And I'm just like, That statement just pushed the agenda even further. I felt like, who would that statement calm down? Or who would that statement incite to even be more upset but the people of color that were already neglected in the launch of this foundation that their complexion does not fluctuate that much year round. Although they have apologized and said that they're extending their shades soon and that they should have known better, they do know better. Not gonna be shape and taping. That's shape what I'll be taping. doing. I won't be doing anything, apparently. Is this is this like a marketing play? Are y'all doing the whole like H&M thing? Like. Is this like, I Let's kind of- Let's piss like, them off mm -hmm. to get more hype around it. Right. And then we'll give them and the And then make them later. happy. Because exactly. so, so sure enough, I did Google that they've already announced they are going to launch 10 more shades. But oh, yeah. I mean, you've already like set the standard Exactly. So. I feel like they do it on purpose. I feel like they do it so that that way whenever they release the shades, everyone's like, okay, yeah, finally about time. And then they get it and then it's like they still make the money. I think it's time that that's backfired on someone. Like the, the concealers not. are not even this bad. Like what went, went, went wrong, Tar? Alyssa Ashley did upload her own video, but unfortunately most of Alyssa's videos are gone off of her channel. Uh, she said in one of her update videos that she updated last year that a lot of the videos were triggering for her for different reasons and that she was kind of moving on from a lot of that type of content. She moved on to exploring a fitness journey and a photography journey and unfortunately we haven't seen a video from Alyssa since this time last year. But even though the video isn't available anymore, what I can tell you about that video was that Alyssa did try to apply the foundations but knew that she was not going to have a shade that was even close to what something that she could work with to wear so she abandoned the foundations in the middle of the video and brought out some of her favorite foundations that do match her that do have inclusive shade ranges. Four months later in May, Tarte released a big press release saying that they were extending the shade range of four of their complexion products. First, the Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation expanded from 25 shades to 40 and expanded to five different undertones. The Creaseless Concealer added 16 new shades, making the total 30 shades. And they promised to increase the number of shades of the Shape Tape Concealer offerings, jumping from 14 to 30 very soon. Finally, the Rainforest of the Sea Foundation changes were from 21 shades to 30 shades. And at some point, I have no record of when this happened, the Shape Tape Foundation disappeared off of the Tarte website. But it reemerged in February of 2019 under a different name, the Face Tape Foundation. I don't know what is going on over at Tarte's Instagram, but they have also gotten rid of their entire Instagram history. There's very few posts over there on Tarte's Instagram. I'm not sure what's happening, but all of the posts related to the launching of the Face Tape Foundation are not accessible. But according to Cosmopolitan, the caption next to the Face Tape Foundation launch announcement said, you asked, we listened, introducing Face Tape Foundation inspired by our our iconic shape tape concealer to give you a flawless natural matte finish. Actions speak louder than words, so we've been working around the clock behind the scenes over the past year to bring you the full coverage foundation of your dreams. They also switched from using shade names to using numbers so that people could more easily understand what the shades were. And interestingly, they also switched out the doe foot applicator and changed it to a pump. The excitement around the face tape foundation was tepid. Uh, people really didn't talk about it a ton. I mean, people mentioned it here and there, like they mentioned other releases, but it was nowhere near what the hype was over the Shape Tape Foundation. I think it's important to note here that poor shade ranges were a thing before Shape Tape Foundation, way before. There were many, many foundation shade ranges that were poor, and there continue to be poor shade ranges today. But these poor shade ranges before and since haven't gotten nearly as much media attention as the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. I think the big reason why was just the climate at the time and people's feelings around makeup in general, the collector mentality 
the popularity of reviews on YouTube and just the intensity of that time on YouTube around the beauty guru sphere. You had literally millions of people waiting to buy just one product. And I don't think that happens anymore, whether it's complexion or even eyeshadow palettes, blushes, lipsticks, there just isn't the hype that there used to be. And I think that's why this one resonated so hard. It was mostly the timing of it and its connection to its sister product, the Shape Tape Concealer, which had been popular for the past couple of years. And I also think that it wasn't just about that there were very few deep shades. It wasn't just that. It was the fact that there were so many fair to light shades that looked almost identical to each other. And it's like, if you could make that, those kinds of variations in undertone for this small group of people, but you can't extend that, it, like it just didn't make sense to people. The leaps and jumps from eggshell to mahogany were just, it was mind blowing, especially from a large brand like Tarte who had launched many foundations before this. And so many people were just so excited about this foundation. And it was like a gut punch to feel like this very important launch in our beauty space was just inaccessible to so many people. And then when you layer that on top of the racism and colorism that's experienced by black people in the US and around the world, it gets even more visceral of a reaction because something like this layers on top of the societal inequities and the experiences of black and brown people in their daily lives. As a result of the backlash, of course, Tarte has, it looks like, really tried to focus on making sure to have gradients within their shade range. They do still have a couple of products that have smaller shade ranges. So for example, the Sugar Rush Skin Treat Poreless Foundation Stick only has 10 shades, but it's a gradient. They also have the powder foundation in 18 shades. That's actually a lot of shades for a powder foundation because it is so sheer typically. The rest of the complexion products that they have all have at least 25 shades. And if you look at them on the screen now, they are all in a gradient. There is no big gaps between the light and deepest shade anymore from that brand. But it did not stop with Tarte. Across the industry, you saw brands focusing on and trying harder to have a gradient of shades. Because like I said in the intro, nobody wanted to be Tarte. I do feel like because of this situation, because of the media attention, and because of the consumer awareness for people like me who don't necessarily or typically have a problem finding our shade, we are all more aware of the problem that people may face that are not us. It is hard to understand the experience of a life that you have never lived, but this gave a lot of people a window into a life that they will never live and a respect for brands that do have a gradient shade range and a disrespect for brands that do not. The two arguments that I hear when I do videos on this topic are ones that I feel like there are counters to. So for example, people will sometimes say, usually people who easily find their shade and don't understand it from a personal perspective will sometimes say, well, brands have a right to create whatever shade range they want to. And that is a valid perspective. But on top of that, people have a right then not to buy from that brand. If they don't feel like a brand cares about them or wants them as a customer because they do not create products for them as a customer, they have a right to then not buy those products. The other argument that I hear very often, again, usually from people who very easily find their shade, is that shades that are lighter sell better. And that's why companies focus on lighter shades. But the counter to that kind of goes with the counter to number one. If you don't create shades or products that work for people with deeper skin tones, they will not shop there. Therefore, if your deeper shades are not selling, maybe it's something within the brand that is creating a negative feeling for people who would use those shades. And therefore, that is why they do not sell not because there are not potential customers to buy them. So it is possible that the brand maybe should just look a little inward and see if they are marketing to those customers before they say those customers do not exist. Because I think that Makeup Forever and MAC and companies like that would disagree that there isn't a market for deeper shades. And with that being said, my friend, 
it is now your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. And we talk about past drama and how we're reflecting on it now in 2024. <laughs> In 2024, I would love to know your thoughts about the whole Shape Tape Foundation debacle. What was your perspective as it was happening if you were there during that time? If not, what is your thought on it now? Now that you know everything that happened, how are you feeling about it? What are, what are your ideas? What are your opinions? I would love to know any of your thoughts down below, but please be a nice human down there because if you are not a nice human, there's a chance that you won't be invited back to our little community. So please be a nice human. And thank you so, so much for watching. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you over here to watch, including my last episode of Behind the Controversy. It should be right there. YouTube's gonna pick the top one for you based on your viewing history. But if you do need to go, I get it. It is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. I'm mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.